Let's talk about getting started with GEMS. These are the topics I will cover. GEMS is a schema for encoding the contents of a geologic map in a GIS database. It is not a schema for encoding a geologic map image, for that you might want Adobe Illustrator, nor is it a schema for encoding the geology of the world, an opportunity to reimagine how we see the world. It's focused on archiving and publication of data for a single map in digital form. It may not be the optimal schema for field notes, nor for publication quality cartography, or for a multi-map database. It may be useful in providing clues towards such databases though. And GEMS is, at the moment, unapologetically ArcGIS-centric. GEMS closely defines table structure and field names in a geologic map database. It has only three embedded vocabularies. It is concealed, an attribute of contacts and faults, has values of no and yes. Geomaterial, which is attached to map unit descriptions, has about 100 values. And geomaterial confidence, three values, high, medium, low. All other terms if used in a database, such as bedding, contact, fission track date, fault, foliation, or questionable, if they're used in the database, are defined in the glossary table, and map units are defined in the description of map unit. There are resources online for using GEMS and understanding it. The most important one, the one to remember, is the NGMDB GEMS page, which has links to the other resources listed here. Uh, the standard itself is USGS publication is rather dry reading, but I recommend the introduction to you and some of the appendices. Uh, we're going to spend much of the afternoon talking about the GEMS toolbox in GitHub. I won't talk about that. You can build a GEMS database from scratch. You can open up the documentation, see what the database schema looks like, make a new database, make a feature data set inside of it, look to see which feature classes belong inside that feature data set, what the fields are, how they're defined, and, and plug away. So you can do this from scratch and you can manipulate the database with generic art tools. But this is the hard way. With a closely defined schema, shared tools become practical. Over the last several years, Evan Toms and I and a few others have built such a library of shared tools that make it much easier to work with the GEM schema. Well, let's fire up your favorite uh, search engine and type into it USGS GEMS tools, and we're looking for the GitHub site. Here's the landing page. I'm going to scroll down some here. There's a readme that explains what we're looking at. This is a repository of Python scripts that run inside of ArcGIS for creating, manipulating, and validating GEMS databases. There are installation instructions, some advice on getting help, a plea for collaboration and uh, discussion of a few known issues. If we go back up to the top of the page, this here is the wiki that I put together a couple of years ago for an earlier version of this short course offered at a DMT workshop in 2018. If you get excited about GEMS and like to write and learn how to use it, would like to work on the wiki, that'd be wonderful. Let's go back. We want to pick up the toolbox. And in general you, general, you want the latest release. Click the link, grab the zip file, and it takes a little while for GitHub to wake up and start shipping it to us. The file won't take long to download. Right now, the zip file is about 30 megabytes. And it's done. We can open the containing folder grab the zip file. I like to keep my code in a code directory so it's separate from my data. I'm going to paste this here. If I look inside, it contains a folder. I don't want a folder that's inside of a folder. So let's go back and extract all. And after a few seconds, the toolbox. A brief caution, this is the GEM standard. The toolbox is not the GEM standard. 
but validate databases intended to follow the standard as closely as we can. In other cases, if there's conflict between the toolbox and the standard, the standard uh, should be honored. Um, a brief note on directory structure. Unless you're customizing the GEMS toolbox, it is easily replaced. It need not be backed up. Your ArcGIS data and project files are near irreplaceable. They should be backed up frequently. And for that reason, keep your GEMS toolbox in one place and your data and project files in another. Don't mix them up. Let's configure ArcMap. I find the default configuration doesn't work for me as well as it could, so I like to make a few changes. I've already opened ArcMap. Let's go in here. We want to go to Customize, ArcMap Options, and make sure that Make Relative Paths the default for new map documents is checked. I'd already done this, but in general, when you open up ArcMap, it's not checked. The next thing you want to do is see that you've got your toolbars of choice. And I like to work with this set, Advanced Editing, Editor. Actually, I don't like the Layout tool. Don't want it. I do want Snapping. I do want Standard. And I want Tools, and I want Topology available. Extensions are not critical, but for my GIS work, I find it's very handy to have 3D analyst and spatial analyst available without thinking about it. And then there's a sticky move tolerance. And um, I want to go to the editor and editing options and make sure this is set for some non-zero number. Otherwise, when you select features, it's possible to move them inadvertently and the most move sticks and you've messed up your database. Um, you want to make a, so you've got to make a definite move before ArcMap recognizes that something is going to be someplace else. So about 20 pixels is a good answer. And then you want to install the Arc Toolbox. And let's see, let me open up the Arc Toolbox window, right click on an empty spot in there, add toolbox, navigate to where you install the toolbox, go into the directory. And if you're in ARC 10.5 or higher, you grab this one. If you're in ARC 10 or 10.2, you grab the other. Takes a few seconds, but it should pop up. There it is. And then you can right click to save settings to default. And maybe the next time you open this MXD, the toolbox will still be there. 